Dr. Rao, thank you so much for joining us uh, through this video call. Your initial thoughts on plasma therapy. We are, we've been hearing about it. You're starting the clinical trial. What do you have to say? So uh, thank you, first of all, Shraddha, for uh, calling me in over here. I think before I start the, the complete story in your story, I, I'll, give, I'll give you all a little introduction to this. Number one, in COVID today, what we know is there are, there are three stages. Stage one is when the patient is asymptomatic and most of the people, that is 80% of the people are in this group. The stage two is patients who are going to be having symptoms like fever, cough and others, but not extensive related to breathlessness. And the third group is patients who are breathless and may require a ventilator broadly. Yeah. These are the three groups that we have. So now the first group, the stage one does not need treatment. The first group does not need treatment, but the second and third group definitely do. So with this context, now when you look at vaccines around the world, they are working and what we know probably from the WHO and all the vaccines around what's happening is about what we are expecting the earliest is in 2021. Now till that time, we will need to build a China wall of the COVID positive and the COVID negative. And this each state will have to do, building the China wall. Now how do you do it? You test, you get the person positive, cordon him off and open the economy slowly by only clear creating this China wall. This China wall needs to be created between the positive and the negative. Now, in this context, those patients who are symptomatic is what I'm focusing on. And the challenge that we are faced with is, what does it take for India to ensure that none of them die? Yeah. I mean, this is the tough shot that we'll have to take a call on. And what is it that we have to take for us to see that none of our patients die? We are already having death, but we'll need to intensify our efforts to see that we stop this at the earliest. Those asymptomatic lucky ones are going to come out, but the symptomatic ones which progress towards worsening ICU and death is something we are worried about. In fact, a lot of people are using the word called happy hypoxia, which means you suddenly see the person happy at one moment, the next moment he's dead. That is what uh, COVID is trying to do in the spectrum of people who are in the bracket of the 20% of which actually the 3 to 4% of them are succumbing to it very badly. So with this context, we actually initiated some work. The second is, you know, we are an oncology focused institute and viruses have been a part of our life because viruses are known to cause cancer. So we've been doing a lot of our work ongoing in immunology on, on viruses. So it was not that it was something new to us. So we have an, ex, we have an excellent team here, um, uh, which is uh, got our uh, immunohematologist, which is Dr. Ashish Dooth from uh, CMC Villor, we have Dr. Sachin Jadav, who is another very renowned uh, hematologist. He also have a background with CMC Villor. We have a very good immunology team with uh, Dr. Jotsna Rao. Jotsna was one of the research associates of Dr. Ralph Steenman, the man who discovered the immune system of the dendritic cell, got a Nobel Prize for it in 2011. And Dr. Guru Raj, who's got a MPhD from Chapel Hill, North Carolina. So we have talent with us and who are ready to work. So we've been working on immunology for about two years, about a, about a month and a half back. You know, uh, what happened was, I, I can, I'll tell you, March 11th, I was supposed to be attending the meeting of the Partnership for Healthy Cities, where I'm actually being one of the speakers. And uh, this meeting was hosted by Mr. Michael Bloomberg, Dr. Tedros, the Director General of uh, WHO, and Mr. Sadiq Khan, the Mayor of London. I was one of the speakers in this meeting. About two weeks before that, we were actually talking about how we could actually play this role in terms of contributing towards the COVID in, in terms of a treatment. Because we were seeing that time, it, it had not yet hit the peak in India. And I was uh, talking to our chairman, Dr. Ajay Kumar, and telling him that maybe this, this is the time we should be also at the forefront to contribute to a global, uh, uh, to a global uh, scientific community in what we can do for COVID because our immunology team was fully geared up and we understood this aspect of it. And I said, this is the time we actually galvanize it. Slowly over the few days, we actually reached the point because my meeting got canceled. Otherwise I would have been stuck in London today. 
and because the health minister of london and all got affected the, the meeting eventually got postponed to november hopefully now at this juncture we actually accelerated our work about i'm, I'm saying almost a month now that we've initiated more than a month now that we've initiated this work and we realized that there are strong reasons for which we do this and i keep telling my i keep telling my teams look you know if you if you know karate okay you will be able to defend yourself at the time of the attack if you don't know karate you can think of a youtube video so this team was actually geared up this team was actually ready with all the necessary team and we said this is the time we actually bring our scientific prowess to the world now in this particular aspect you know we had some tremendous support and i would like to place on record the support we got from the lgvs team especially dr ujwal and uh, hema who actually went out of the way the lgvs publication team of which even lancet is a part gave us such tremendous support to build our scientific tempo so every time i would tell them okay what's going on across the world what's happening here what does it take for india to be at the forefront of this war i kept asking them and they kept bombarding us with material so our research team um, uh, was actually full time on a job Uh, with the uh, uh, doctor akshay shalini uh, doctor guru raj all of our teams were actually doctor anand all of them working all on the crowd researching trying to figure out what is it that we are lacking with what is it that we can do emory university atlanta georgia came forward you know i had a very nice video call with them where they said that look we want to partner with you in this in this race we actually want to join you in this race now that's the kind of global synergy we had to pull this off now at this juncture we wanted to target every single aspect of the stage leaving no stage unturned so we have not working on a vaccine we are working on treatment towards covid and the challenge we have in front of us is can we save every life that is currently a threat by the virus so we are at a very interesting time in this last four weeks you know and um, I, i mean this four weeks for me has been beyond research i mean beyond research and beyond the pressure of research has been an aspect of seeing socialism communalism capitalism and um, uh, and uh, greatly humanism so we've seen all facets of this today it's a it's a tough point but we are ready with whatever we can so now coming to convalescent plasma so among the four things that we had uh, three things that we had proposed convalescent plasma seemed to be the one that has been historically known so they said let's go with the among the three enemies let's go with the known enemy so the government said let's go with people now what's happening in the global scenario today about 400 clinical trials are running in covid area among them about 50 are focused on convalescent plasma of which the forefront is from usa from china <clears throat> and a few other countries that are attempting it from india we had proposed for a phase 1 clinical trial now why a phase 1 clinical trial because in any medical new drug you have to go through a systematic phase that is phase 1 2 3 and 4 in phase 1 you look at safety because the hippocratic oath and our principle of medicine tells us above all do no harm so we have to look at safety of the new medicine now what is this convalescent plasma and what is its safety convalescent plasma is an age old theory it's well known entity even in the earlier flu eras they have actually used this where you use the the word convalescence means the person is recovering so the blood of the person who is recovering has a lot of valuable material proteins in them which they believe could be used in the fight against the virus so our blood component and i don't want to turn our audience into doctors but our blood component has two parts to it some cells and the fluid part which is the colorless fluid the colorless fluid is the plasma so when i donate the blood if you've ever gone for a blood donation they take out about 470 ml of your blood half of it is the cells and half of it is just water plasma but that water is not just plain water it has got a lot of material of proteins and other things into it so what this comprises of is a lot of antibodies a lot of immune cells uh, a lot of antibodies which have the power to combat the virus so the, the 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 hypothesis was that the person who has recovered from this illness has in his blood the secret code to killing the virus now what is that da vinci code 
is what everybody is trying to analyze. But then they say that look beyond that analysis. Now what he's got the the code, so let's use the code. So that is where phase one trials are happening in USA, China, and now in India we are going to start this. So that's about convalescent plasma and the and the initiation that we are doing in the last. Four weeks, we've prepared a dossier of about 239 pages, which comprises of the clinical protocols, the executive summaries, the rationales, the references, the therapeutics, the uh, the, the the way we are going to deal with investigations, the assessments of it, and many references to this and collaborative effort so there is a whole lot of things that we have and informed consent form so the whole lot of things that we have put together in a 239 page dossier which we have submitted which is what is required to initiate a clinical trial this is not just a therapy you cannot and will not be allowed to just say ki main blood nikalunga aur dalunga are hamare paas bhi blood bank hai hum dal denge you know you are not allowed to do that because this can have serious serious implications and i think that is where the government of india is created a brick wall around them to say that you just can't come and tell us that we want to just try something so over the last 3 weeks we've been actually gone through rigorous amount of scrutiny evaluation defending our study and what we want to do through the icmr through the drug controller through the cdsu and fda so we've we've now got the step one clearance the, the first clearance for it is what we've got for convalescent plasma and we hope to start that in the next coming days and hcg is getting geared up for that but is there any conclusive evidence which has come out which is saying that it is actually beneficial so the first proof of it comes from data that we have from earlier patients who have been treated with earlier other viruses like the influenza virus or the sars covid which is not the novel covid 19 so we have some data now based on that data and based on global data from other phase 1 and phase 2 we have phase 1 studies we have some promise to say yes this has potential in selected group of patients now why selected group of patients typically you should see the virus enters through the nostril or through the oral cavity enters into our lungs and stays there in most people it doesn't grow up to the level of creating breathlessness so they come out on their own in about those 20% it may extend to the fact of expanding in the lungs and growing in the lungs creating breathlessness and in an extreme of them it will start entering into the blood it is at that juncture that convalescent plasma is considered to be beneficial not in every patient you cannot use this in every patient and say every covid patient why not i give convalescent plasma it may not work because you are sending certain valuable antibodies from the blood into the blood to fight the blood at that level of that and not into the lungs directly so a large amount and i'm saying this not to be largely the theory and the premise of this is that's why to be used for seriously ill people what's your estimate by when will we have something conclusive see i feel researchers across the world who are racing against time on covid know that we do not have the luxury of time we do not have covid has brought out the best in us in terms of asking us on what best can can the the covid challenge do to india or to the world today so we we know that we don't have the luxury of time because we are seeing i mean countries like us with advanced healthcare systems are just seeing people drop dead so we we don't want to reach there and i think this is the time we we you know i was telling our chief minister sir this is the time that india should show our scientific prowess to the world not sit in our houses but this is the time we show the scientific prowess to the world give our best shot to this and this is the time that the best scientists of this country come together and make a difference and show the global world that this is what we could do we actually could do it with smallpox we could do it with polio we'll also do it with covid and that possibility is there and i believe that we are at the forefront of that race and finally what will count is that we tried i think beyond that we at least i know for for the last 3 weeks my conscience is clear that i did the maximum best in this scenario that i could getting blasted by my wife for all the things she thought it would be a relaxed 21 days for me with a light lower load but she realized it's been the most crazy 